Welcome to episode 45 of the current backloggers. The date is December 16th. I'm your host, KCP, along with my good friend and co host, Cody G. Cody, how's it going? Oh, it's going good, buddy. <laughs> I'm a little wild up right now. Got pulsing through me right now with caffeine. Yeah, I can tell that. We're on a... You have Daniel sent me a text and said, shh. <laughs> so I guess you heard. Um, but, she uh, also watching The Bachelor, Nasty Bachelor. Uh, um, is it on tonight? Uh, I don't know if it's a new episode. I think Renee's just watching old episodes. Uh, but I'm not sure she might be. That show's terrible, man. I was, when, you, when you're like, hey, give me another half hour, I went out there and I was just sitting through a little bit of it, and God, it's terrible. <laughs> it was like a Adult Swim skit or something that just wasn't <laughs> funny. It was like you were turning on an Adult Swim TV show and just removed all the funny parts. I know you're not was, the biggest uh, fan of uh, Joel McHale, McHale in the Soup, but uh, he used to have every week that show just provide the best clips every week. Yeah, I feel like uh, there was a really good clip on there. It was. Uh, the, she went to go meet his niece and he was way too creepy with his niece like he's like petting her ponytail and he's like I just love her so much and then she's like haha I just kept hugging her and even though they already hugged and then uh, at the end of the date um, she was like show her your dance moves and it's this really nerdy nerdy guy just going like and then the little girl starts doing it, and then the 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 bachelorette starts doing it, and they went on for way too long. Uh, I just fucking hate that show. I don't get why it's so popular. <laughs> for those people listening to podcasts, Cody just did a little dance number. If you want to watch on YouTube, we're also not in person today. We're on Discord. I feel like I never say that. I'm sure the audio quality, you know from all the podcasts we listen to, I feel like it has to be obvious when we're not together. Yeah, I, uh, I noticed there's like a weird echo on your mic. Some booger whistles. I don't know. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> That's disgusting. Um, so what have you been up to, buddy? Well, it snowed today, so I shoveled some snow and then went over to Home Depot mm-hmm. and picked up some tools and stuff to work on my garage door. Uh, did some grocery shopping. Okay. I fucking hate grocery shopping. Do you like grocery shopping? I actually do. I'm not like obsessed with it or anything, but yeah, I like it. Oh, I can't stand it, man. It's just a uh, everybody's always in the way, and it just everyone's just pissed off at each other. I don't know. And then today, I just like uh, um, there's a special place in my heart for Christmas, uh, like snack cakes you know what I'm talking about mm-hmm. so I just bought way too many of them and then uh, the cashier she <laughs> had her mask like half on half off which I didn't really give a shit but um, she just started eating fruit snacks in the middle of the like she was <laughs> pulled out she pulled out two separate times she pulled out a whole pack of <laughs> well just fruit snacks and would just eat the whole thing and uh, it was really weird and she'd take her mask completely off and uh, I tried to break the awkwardness of her fruit snacks and I was like yeah I'm on a real health kick right now because as she's scanning like 36 Christmas trees um, and she didn't even she didn't say anything she, she didn't even respond to that <laughs> she just kept scanning and eating fruit snacks that doesn't sound like a job at that point it sounds like, like uh, you're enjoying life yeah I think she was I <laughs> I thought it was hilarious and I loved it. What uh, that's what I is that? Uh, Meyer. Okay. Yeah, it sounds like a Walmart store, I know, but it's uh, it was definitely Meyer. All right. Um, how do you feel about Gingerbread Man? Not just regular Gingerbread Man, like the uh, kind you're talking about, the same company in the box with the uh, icing on them. Uh, yeah, that's what I bought today. Actually, bought oh, Gingerbread Men and Christmas trees. I used to like the Christmas trees a lot. I'm not as big a fan, but Gingerbread Man, I can still get down with. Oh, so good. It's the two best ones. Do you ever get, like, a... The thing with the Christmas trees 
is it's almost like you're eating lipstick. It like coats your mouth with some fucking weird chemical that you know you're not supposed to be eating. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I just feel like I'm taking this delicious lipstick and just chewing on it. That's fucking disgusting. But I love them, and I swear, man, the packages get smaller and they get more expensive. And uh, the gingerbread men are more like gingerbread boys. You know what I'm saying? Hmm, I don't know if I like that. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm surprised you like gingerbread. A little, uh, a little spicy, spicy cookie. Yeah, it's definitely one of those things that I can't eat like a whole handful of or anything, one or two, and then that's my limit. Now I'll eat them again later, but because I definitely get to you after a while. It's disgusting the amount that I eat in a sitting. I can do that with a lot of stuff, so you know I'm not judging or being like, oh, I like to be healthy. It's just like you said that like. Um, that spiciness just kind of gets to me after a while. I feel you. Um, I was playing games last night and I probably ate no bakes, so yeah, I can just keep going with uh, most stuff. No bakes, man. That's another one. <laughs> it's the good stuff. That's all you've been up to, that guy? Yep, just getting fatter. <laughs> it's that I'm time of year, though, right? Yeah, I just my issue is that it's that time of year all year. <laughs> Speaking of which, we still gotta watch Batman before uh, Christmas comes and goes. Oh yeah, uh, Fat Man, right? Yeah. For some reason, I thought you said Batman. People think that every time, probably because that's so much more common for a movie. <laughs> um, but all I've been up to this week is. Working as usual, taking some more overtime. They've been offering double overtime for like the past month. So definitely taking that up as much as I can. And then besides that, I did a few fun things. I went to another drive through Christmas light display, which I can't get enough Christmas. So I also went to uh, the zoo lights, the uh, Columbus Zoo. They do the lights every year. I went there. And then the only other thing I did this week is not Christmas related at all. Was went to another columbus mavericks game which is like a minor league hockey team here and they won again so they're undefeated in all the games i've been there all two of them this was uh their first overtime game ever and their first win in overtime ever obviously so uh that was a good time i went with my dad we, uh, i can't remember the last time we went to a sporting event together not because anything dark or anything but just because the times obviously So Yeah, so they're a new team? Yeah, this was their first or this is their first season. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're uh they won their last four games too, and one of them they won ten nothing. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh I think that's all I've been up to though. I can uh before we get going with the normal show, I can talk about a few random things with you if you want. Okay. So the first one is I was talking to people at work, and Every Rose Has a Thorn by Poison was playing, as it normally does there. And, okay. and um, Every Rose. <laughs> I was, I thought in my mind, not even trying to be humorous, I was being sincere with it, even though it is funny. I was, is there any song more cheesy than this song ever? And... I couldn't think of one. I try to make a goal to ask people. A lot of people, ah, I don't know, or I'll think about it. I got a few people that answered. I don't think anybody could outdo it. I was curious if you could. The uh, ones that I got was our friend Jason said, Free Fallen. I was like, Jason, that song's not even cheesy, maybe like a little generic, but that's not even fucking close to as bad as every rose has its thorn. And, uh, then, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, James said, uh, oh no, Jason said another one. He said, I'm too sexy for my shirt. And I was like, you know, that one's, that's a good contender, but I feel like they had to have known, like, I feel like that's like self-aware, like they're being ridiculous. There's no way that song's sincere. If it is, then that's definitely a contender. But what makes uh poison song so cheesy is that he thinks he's like writing the most important love song in history not like oh here's a goofy song and uh 
James had a good contender because this guy was definitely being serious. He said, um, uh, what is it fucking called? The Vanilla Ice song, Ice Ice Baby. I was like, that's a, that's a good contender. That's a, I think a fair one, but still, I don't think it beats out Every Rose Has a Thorn. Can I give you a song that I thoroughly like and I was obsessed with this singer? Go for uh, it. When I was a kid. Uh huh. But uh, Drift Away uh, by Uncle Cracker. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. I think that's pretty fucking corny. That's pretty corny. I still don't know if it beats it, but that, that's another contender. I'm like Jason's free falling. How's like, the fuck? <laughs> free falling? That's not even close. Um, yeah, Drift Away, I like it as well, but uh, yeah, it's very corny. I uh, used to listen to Uncle Cracker all the time while playing Pokemon Snap and Pokemon Stadium. We used to have that on. <laughs> Actually, yeah, it was Pokemon Stadium because me and my friends and my brother would just have that CD on repeat listen, playing Pokemon Stadium, which did not connect at all. <laughs> uh, God, man, he really fell off, though. Yeah, he's had a few hits here and there, just sporadically, but not like, I feel like at that time, everybody knew of him. I feel like on this song comes on to every uh, middle-aged woman, like, <laughs> That smokes way too much or drinks. Starts screaming the lyrics to it. <laughs> Give it me, boss. Free my soul. God damn you. Oh, I love it. <laughs> um, So you are talking about snow earlier. You know I love snow. I can't remember. How do you feel about snow? It's great. It's pretty, I like it. You do? I don't even mind shoveling it. I don't either. Obviously, it's not the funnest to drive in, but unless you have, actually have issues, then oh, even I that, do. Do you? Oh yeah, you said yeah, it's a yeah. little shit box Honda. <laughs> it's all over the place, and I, I can't get in and out of my driveway right now because there's a huge hump. That me and my neighbor, like uh, everyone's just been parking on the street, and uh, the one neighbor <laughs> he always parks on the street, mm -hmm. but then because everybody was parking on the street already. <laughs> And Renee parked in his spot. It was the most passive aggressive thing ever. He tried to parallel park in front of her and it wasn't going well. And I don't know if he thought we were watching him or what, but I didn't I wasn't paying attention. But out of nowhere I just hear him just like fucking gas his car really hard and uh just plow right up his driveway and just barely make it up there and sounded real real ridiculous and uh he slammed his door and um I was about ready to move Renee's car too because we were leaving, and he saw me getting in the car and starting it, and he just looked at us real passive aggressively. But between him and the fruit snacks lady, it was, I was I've been laughing pretty hard today from them. Not bad. Yeah, uh, so if you just gash your car real, real hard, it'll get up there. Just uh, um, besides that, my ship box would be all over the road. Gotcha. You're really missing out by not being able to see me on video. When we started this, my mm -hmm. afro was out of control, and I saw it just been kind of morphing into a, a mohawk that does not look good at all. Sounds good. My hair is getting mullet. No, that's that's happened back here. Can't really get on camera. But no, no thank you. We can uh, move on to things we forgot about from the weeks before. You got anything, buddy? No. No. The only things I have are I watched Christmas Vacation. I don't think I talked about that last week, which is uh, always fantastic. Maybe I said that and I'm just being redundant now, but I think I left that off. And then Gears of War, probably like a little over a month ago, we were talking why well, I brought it up, but uh, in the news section we were talking about the update that was coming out for it, and there was confusion, at least for me, from what I was reading about the new DLC that was coming out. It was called High Busters, which was a single-player expansion. But then there's also the addition of David Batista as Marcus. And I couldn't figure out from the wording if you could just use him as like a in the main campaign and just replace Marcus, or if this new DLC literally just Marcus wasn't in it and David Batista was. So... Mm -hmm. Which I thought would be really weird. I was like, that'd be cool if you could add him to your main campaign because that's something that's already exists and you can have Marcus. So it's like a silly thing to do after you beat it. 
But that would have been really weird just to replace him and act like it's the same thing in DLC. So that thankfully is what they did. They finally, uh, a couple weeks ago, they added um, a free update to the main Gears of War campaign, Gears 5, obviously. I guess not called Gears of War anymore, just Gears 5. But uh, they added to the main campaign where you can play as Dave Bautista. It's his voice as Marcus. And that's just changes throughout the entire campaign. But the DLC is completely separate. It came out yesterday. Like I said, it's called High Busters. It's free if you have Game Pass. So we'll get it automatically, which is nice. And that's a um, DLC that has nothing to do with David Batista. So thankfully they did do it right because I thought that seemed to make no sense to me. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, kind of rare to get DLC on Game Pass, too. Yeah, especially uh, something that big. And if you do you would think it'd be like a new map or something not an entire expansion i haven't played it myself yet i want to so i can't speak to how it is but still a cool and premise at least and then the only other thing i had was when we were talking about halo infinite and all the news with that and that it's delayed officially till fall of 2021 is this makes the uh all the advertisement and the monster expansion, the uh, or monster XP, the double XP, all the more awkward because they're already like, how does this work now? But now it's like a year and a half ahead of time. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming they're going to let them be used, but I still think that's weird to just have stuff floating out like a year and a half before the game's out. Yeah, it's all the way around. It sucks, man. Yeah. So... I can't imagine it's literally again what what all that go waste when you know there's people that are hardcore bought a ton of that to prepare for it. So I appreciate it if they did that, but I guess we'll see. I'm sure they'll update about that. And then I think that's I feel like I'm missing something else, but I'm sure I'll bring it up on the next episodes. So do you have any corrections, questions, or feedback? No. No? You uh I can read um, Jane's email. You want to get Ryan's ready over there, buddy? Yeah, let me pull it up. Don't sound too sad. All right, you want me to start? Hello, James while question you're... regards. <laughs> you want me to start with James while you're looking for that? Sure. All right. So James beats him with the question of the week. How's it going, guys? Great. He didn't put a question mark that time, but I got to make a thing now. This week's, this week's question is about something I find interesting, but I was curious how you feel about it. What is your opinion on series that have different aspects? Like, for example, Mass Effect has games, books, and comics. So it sounds like he's kind of talking about, like, canon, the uh, overarching story that goes into different medias. And then he said, also... A quick correction from Mass from a Mass Effect fanboy. Casey said Andromeda was a prequel, but the arcs in the game were launched in between in between two and three. It took six hundred years to get to Andromeda. And I looked it up and he's totally right that I thought for sure it was a prequel. I thought they were even advertised like that or talked about E three and stuff, but I looked it up and the timeline is set between two and three. I haven't played Andromeda, so it makes a little more sense, but I'm surprised I remember hearing that. But that actually makes me even more curious play Andromeda because I was like, prequel sounds cool, but I don't know if any of the people that we know in Mass Effect are even going to be relevant at that point. So I feel like it's kind of cool that even if it doesn't directly connect, which it might, I haven't played it, that it still kind of like fills in a gap there. Oh, yeah. You didn't know Andromeda was a like super in the future? Well, it's uh, set between two and three, so it's kind of like. Uh, um, like I guess you could say Rogue One. Really? I always thought it was like way in the future for some reason. Yeah, no, I looked it up and he said that because I thought it was a prequel, but everything I could find said the same thing though, set between two and three. Jesus, man. Okay. I guess more reason I need to play it, but um, we were uh, we were both the opposite. <laughs> I thought it was like, I thought it was like way in the future. I don't know. I've never. They're really giving Mass Effect a full chance. Yeah. So uh, what do you think about Jane's question here about, uh, I said, kind of like a canon overarching media outside of games? 
Uh, I mean, in general, or like, is there one that I specifically like? Um, he said, "What is your opinion on series that have different aspects and then use that example? Games, books, comics." So. I, I think it's great, man. I've never, uh, never had a bad time with X. I feel like if you're reading that shit, you're already super into a series. Just like the little bit I've done on Halo has been great. Gears of War, the Gears of War comics, fantastic. Uh, the art style and it's amazing, and I think uh, it's a great way to get more behind the scenes or intricate details or sometimes uh, it's like adds a shit ton of uh, could be like a bridge between games like I know Gears of War did that mm -hmm. um, when we get into what we've been watching uh, Star Wars 2003 Clone Wars added a shit ton of stuff yeah. that uh, was like almost integral in Star Wars now integrity Integrity, integrity of uh, Star Wars. Um, so yeah, I think it's great, and it just gives if you're super into series, it gives you something more to more to do. Yeah, I feel more to consume. I feel the same for the most part. The only thing I would add is, I definitely like that that can add more to the world, and like if you're curious to dive deeper into something like a species or a deeper storyline or something that a game doesn't go into or whatever in this scenario goes into i think it's cool the only thing that i would add like i said is that i don't like when it actually is kind of integral and that you need to do it i feel like that's cool to to add something and be like oh what is that and have it but i feel like what you're watching or playing or whatever you're interacting with i feel like you shouldn't have to find a different media source for it to make sense and yeah i think star wars uh spoiler alert for rogue one when uh, or solo excuse me but when uh darth maul comes back i feel like a lot of people are like, wait how, he's dead i feel like that's cool but i feel like you shouldn't have to consume everything i think that one's a you can let off at least a little easier because that still is um at least video, it's the show, but it at least is the same media form. I think where it's a, a lot worse is like if you played, I don't think Halo does this, but Halo, for example, since you brought it up, like if you played the original Halo, and I think it was cool to be able to read the backstory of Fall of Reach if you want to, but I don't feel like you needed that. I feel like if they just left out something in between Halo that didn't connect, that's where I don't like that kind of stuff. I feel like some I think some places just do that accidentally because they are trying to create something cool, but I think some companies intentionally do that to try and make you buy other media. And like I said, I feel like whatever you're consuming, it should be good on its own and anything else should just be additive. I don't feel like you shouldn't have to do that for something that makes sense you're already using. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think it's also kind of nice though if something is integral because it gives that People that dig deep into the lore or something, it uh, has more meaning and it's more rewarding to those people. Yeah, I feel like, like I said, Star Wars maybe it wasn't the best example because it still is the same media, even though it's not like the mainline movies. It still is the same media form, all video. But I feel like things in books or comics or music or whatever that are aside from games. I feel like can still be very important and fill something that you couldn't get in a game without the game missing out on it. So that's what I mean by additive. I feel like the prize on its own should stand up and then anything else should be just kind of like a an added bonus to it. Doesn't make it not important. It just doesn't mean that the prize itself is something that can't be just a standalone thing. Yeah, I agree. But uh, thanks for the question, James. You want to get into Ryan's nonsense here? Yeah, let me go back here. Ryan, the subject is... Please make a dressing of questions slash slash feedback. Slash slash. Good times to thee. 
I'm feeling the very upset after listening to episode 44, reading of my writing. As is was all that was happened, just read. You know answer. You do again, again, and again. No answer. I asked the question in many email feedbacking. And you no know answer. I put in subjecting line urgent need answer. No, the answer to come. I wait two week from writing the feedbacking to you reading the feedbacking all for the no answers. You do answering right away for next feedbacking. But no do answer for feedbacking. <laughs> Maybe I do too long a write. Yes, you do. <laughs> and you do forgetting about the answer. I will start with questionings in order that numbers for you no confuse. I do up front, so no, you no forget. I do not make the very, very big appreciating if you make the answer. Question one. Why you no backing behind backs? <laughs> I do make think backing make the good look. I don't know, Ryan. Uh, I think it's up to Casey to find the material he wants to wants to put up on the on the backing behind backs, as you say. <laughs> uh, question number two, or do you want to answer number one? Why is there no backing behind backs? Um, yeah, I didn't think any of these questions were sincere, but last time he was over, he said he was very upset that we keep dodging his questions. Uh, I can't put any of this i didn't know any of this was fucking serious um <laughs> and it's ironic right now we're on discord so it wouldn't even matter it's kind of over here but it wouldn't really matter in this episode but uh yeah the backing isn't done ryan because you bought me back in that doesn't fit it and then um that was a passive aggressive comment for ryan um and then yeah i just need to find the material i'm looking at a couple things and it's all expensive so just try and find a good option Okay, question two. <laughs> Why you avoid the answerings of questions <laughs> from the my feedbacking? Um, well, I think I just answered that one. I didn't realize there was any sincere question in any of these. Even when you said, I knew you were talking about the backdrop, I still didn't realize there was a sincere question there. All right, question number three. <laughs> Why you know address how you are sorry about false statements of misspells? I make clear no misspells and you know address, just laugh. Um, yeah, nothing's uh, misspelled, I don't think. It's just uh, makes me feel like I had a stroke or something. How do you feel, Casey? Yeah, that's why I have you read them. I fall apart reading those things. Uh, and the next part, oh, by the way, everything's in green and underlined. <laughs> uh, the next part is on to the correcting and clarifying of my f previous feedbacking and previous email controversially titled re 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 forward forward re feedback i do make the say i will give the good wording on visuals you did an e39 around minutes 17 through 19 it did the good on making clear i'm also very afraid of the audio listening that miss on these can be double side to coin so make you please keep in the mind <laughs> As uh, all caps and exclamation point. Uh, to make the clarifying about this feedbacking, it is supposed to be all positive. You take in the negative tone, but it was meant to be happy. Oh, sorry. I better start reading this happy. <laughs> if you make the reading again, you should see I'm making the say people who do the audio listing miss out on these visual visualizing visuals that are the good. So that is why they are two coin sides and watch the flip. I know it's salt audio experience like you think. Please keep in the mind as a happy face exclamation point. So I think he's saying there uh, he uh, he thinks we're doing good on the audio side. Okay, so the next part is now to begin feedbacking on how you read my previous feedback. You make say about office and wanting to shoot in head and make say that I say this is my writings. I make clarifying I know say these things. You put the words in my mouth as they do make the say. I do make the sorry for length of writings, but I try to make the address to all your bad and false wordings. 
You make the many false words, and I want to be clear to all my fans. I get many <laughs> feedbacking from others to me saying, wow, the Ryan is good with feedback. <laughs> Explanation point. In all caps. He. Best feedbacking. Explanation point. So it is only make fair to them to make the clarifying <laughs> feedbacking. The other day I had a guy from uh, India call me and told me he's from my Chase Bank. <laughs> And uh, they um, right now they're offering to erase all of my credit card debt and actually give me a little bit of money. Uh, nice. But I don't have a Chase bank account nor a credit card, so I just played stupid for a while. But um, him trying to sound official sounds very similar to this. <laughs> he also tried to say it a very American name. You played down uh, the right when you gave me your social, and you're, all right, the game's over. Yeah. I just kept giving him uh, crazy numbers, but then I fucked up, and he asked for my expiration date on my credit card. And because clearly I'm just trying to get my credit card number, and uh, I don't have one, though. But um, I fucked up my expiration point. Uh, the expiration date I gave him was old, and uh, he just went, okay, and then just hung up. But... Uh, I feels very similar to this. Uh, but anyway, so new feedbacking. I will make the contact direct to Casey out of this form. It is very important and do not want to confuse to happen like happened many times before. He make the include of comment here he if he want about the direct feedbacking. To leave you a nonet. The fuck is a nonet? Is it like sonnet, nonet? Is it non it or non it? No, no net. Sonnet, no net. Well, Current backloggers. Back oh, probably. <laughs> Current backloggers are the sexy. <laughs> they don't answer to the questions, but they should still feel the love. Please keep this in mind. You do make the best. Keep backlogging. Yours truly, Ryan. End. Um, that's, uh, that's Ryan's none it. So I'll add a few things here. I was like, why does this sound so familiar? Are these things really just fucking wiping my mind away? And that's how dumb this email was. He read it all in person to me, and I forgot that was a thing. I was like, this sounds way too familiar. What is happening? <laughs> and I still can't. I think he said non it. I think Michaela said the same thing. What is that? And he went into some explanation. And uh, it's also funny that I forgot that because he said later in that email, as you read, but uh, I can talk about it on air if I want to, the, what he said in person. And I forgot that was something that was even supposed to be said to you. I just happened to say it. Um, and I like how he said that he's trying to be nice with his feedback. And we're taking it the wrong way. And then he is pretty insulting and um, very condescending and um, very full of himself. He said that people tell him often that he's great with the feedback. And who the fuck has... That'd be such a weird compliment. <laughs> Man, you are great with feedback. Yeah. I, um, especially where he said... Uh, let's see if we can find it here. Um, here it is. I do make the sorry for lengths of writings, but I try to make the address to all your bad and false wordings. Yeah, no. You make the many false words, and I want to be clear to all my fans, so all his <laughs> fans. I get many feedbacking from others to me saying, wow, the Ryan is good with feedbacking. He best feedback. <laughs> yeah, so you love clarifying and correcting things, so when you write your next email, please tell us who your fans are and who's giving you this feedback, and if you have any evidence, you can send in uh, pictures and our video, and I'll post them since you love the visuals. And that was another thing. I guess I'll have to listen to the – or watch the episode and the timestamp he's talking about because you said how he thinks the audio is getting better is what he's saying. I feel like what I took out of that was there must have been – that must have been one of the videos I put a picture in or a video or something because he said he thought the visuals were good but that the audio listens were l losing out by not having that. So I think he was actually still criticizing even there. I don't think he was complimenting us, but I could be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, I have to go through this again to find those timestamps. Oh, here it is. Uh, episode 39 around 17 to 19. 
Are you looking at it? Uh, yeah, I can go. I can go over there. Oh, real no, quick. you don't have to. I just saw your screen light up, and that's what you're doing. Let's uh, let's do it. Let's see what uh, the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> so, episode thirty-nine. <laughs> this is about. Oh gosh, I gotta go to videos now. You've been streaming too much. I know. Uh, episode thirty-nine. There it is. And he said the what the hell did he say again? Uh seventeen to nineteen. That's pretty early in, so Oh yeah, you you put a visual of your costumes. God damn it. Yep, see he's criticizing us. <laughs> well, Ryan, I already covered that feedback for you because I already said how I need to get better at telling people if we're on Discord or in person and better explain things. So I'm keeping that in the mind. Don't worry. <laughs> Should we uh, move on to news here, you think, buddy? That sounds perfect. All right. If you want to send any corrections, questions, or feedback, you can send to currentbacklars at gmail.com. Man, do you have any news? Uh, no news. No? Okay. No. Um. The first one I have, I know we talked about this before the podcast and we thought it was kind of controversial, but we wanted to make sure that we brought it up. And that is that we wanted to thank the Cleveland baseball team for ending racism. And we're just really proud that they could do that for everyone. Did you want to add anything to that, Cody? Yeah, I'm trying to get back to my Google Doc here since I had to sign in to, here's, uh, to read that email. Uh, yeah, my biggest thing is when has a sports team ever been something <laughs> negative? When has a sports team named themselves after something because they were like, God, I really hate this thing? <laughs> what I mean, seriously, when did they name themselves after something like, God, this thing over here is really stupid? We better name our sports team after it. No, I'm with you. I was, I'm, I'm mocking in case you couldn't tell. I'm not actually. Oh, it's, yeah. I know you could, yeah. I know you know me. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm totally mocking it. And, yeah, I've always had the thought process that even hating – see, it's gonna, I can't say this. I can say even hating the Indians, but that would be offensive. I'm clearly talking about the team. Um, but uh, even clear, hating them, I was like, they're obviously not doing it mockingly. That kind of would not really make sense for an organization to try and hurt themselves and to – make fun of something that's kind of just hurting your own brand but um yeah it becomes a hundred times more stupid when the reason in quotes you're changing it is because of a group of people that time and time again and so they're not offended by it and many of them say they take pride in it and pride for those two reasons that there's much bigger issues even if they did care about it and then also that they take pride in it because they do know that they're trying to honor something and then I feel like even if you want to be politically correct, if you want to call it that, I feel like politically correct, I feel like should mean should not be a bad term because I feel like actual political correctness shouldn't be a bad thing. But like most things, it's just spun out into something crazy. But um, I feel like even if you want to be like that, the Cleveland baseball team, I feel like kind of destroyed that message. And I don't know if you saw, they said that they don't know what they're going to name the team, but they know it have nothing to do with Native Americans. I was like that. So the issue was that they were offended, so you're going to make sure you don't have anything to do with them. Not Maybe we should do something more respectful. <laughs> well, I think, too, Ohio was full of, uh, was full of tribes uh -huh. and a lot of in, uh, Native American history. So I saw some recommendations in naming it after a local tribe after getting the permission, like sort of like the Seminoles. I was like, that sounds, that sounds good. But I showed you that study from PragerU with all those interviews. I know PragerU is a conservative, conservative leaning, but uh, good, good luck finding anything that's not leaning. And it's usually leaning liberal, not conservative. Yeah. But it was on uh, the Navajo res res uh, reservation. And they're like, no, we kind of enjoy it. We kind of liked it. And uh, it's a way of celebrating it. And uh, America recognizing its heritage and celebrating uh native americans or indians 
But even with the uh, Chief Wahoo, I mean, could he not be compared to the, the Vikings Norsemen or the Cavaliers and their Cavalier? And I was looking up the history of the Cavalier. Um, initially, it was in, like an insult to a certain, I think it was the pro kings in the the english civil war mm -hmm. so that even that was a derogatory term to to um white people and uh you know the vikings um but once again one is a as a team's name or a mascot been a negative thing you would never name yourself after something uh that you weren't celebrating like it doesn't make any sense to me no, I'm uh, with you. Even the story of the the Native American that played for the Indians back when they were what were they? Were they the Spiders? Yeah, which or, like that. Spiders, yeah. And they said, Well, that guy was just uh they made fun of him and that's where the the whoa whoa that whole thing came from was uh uh kids would yell it at him and he was just a big alcoholic. Um so I don't know, man. I just don't give a shit. Uh, even like if you go to like opening days, there's always groups, um, um, groups of people out there be protesting the name and you can go look up photos of them each year when they're out there protesting in Cleveland, not a single one are native American. There's like a few black people mixed with mainly white people. Um, I just don't get where it's white people go around getting offended for, for other, other groups or other nationalities or, uh standing out there thinking they're being powerful or some some shit. I just think society's just uh we got it too good. We got to find shit to complain about. Yeah. Yeah, and like when the Redskins change their name. Like I said then I don't know where it stops and that might the other side would argue like you're just taking the extreme route, like when people talk about gay marriage, like, where, where does it stop? Having sex with your dog? I don't think it's extreme to <laughs> actually think that with this because if you have that train of thought that Indians and Redskins are offensive then why wouldn't you think I think it's very logical if you're at that mindset to think Cowboys which are known for killing Indians and Vikings like you said and you can just keep going and going where does it end because I feel like you could find reasons to be offended by almost every name yeah I don't uh I don't get it. And if you look at uh, today, what happened with uh, Kumio in New York City, I was like passing some bills to make the Confederate flag illegal, uh, which is insane. I, I I have no plans of flying the Confederate flag, nor I don't support them. Or I definitely view the Confederates as traitors, and it's usually rednecks that really don't um, doesn't have that meaning to them. But at what point do you stop? How can you how can you as a, a mayor or governor tell someone they can't fly a certain flag? It's yeah. it's insane. So it's like a slippery slope. Where do you stop with this? Yeah, that's uh that's my bigger point with all this stuff is that I feel like it's even hard to talk about because if you talk about any issue in particular, people just think you're trying to defend that issue. A lot of the things I talk about with this kind of stuff um, not this one, obviously, but a lot of them I don't actually particularly believe in or care about. It's that you shouldn't have to, it shouldn't be personal for you or be something that you support to try and support people's rights to believe in stuff or to be able to do things unless it's obviously like car causing physical harm or actually wrong people should be able to do what they want so I feel like the more you don't support that even if you don't agree with something because like I said a lot of these things that I talk about or don't even necessarily talk about because like I said you can't really talk about them because if you do people just assume you're on that side or that fight or whatever it's for then I don't know yeah I just don't know where it stops and I feel like that's the biggest issue is that you can't really talk about these things without being on a certain side or being in that fight when you should just be able to talk about it as a broader issue of you shouldn't have to be on a certain side to support actual freedom and liberty. And I think it's all just kind of crazy. 
Yeah, sorry, I, mean, I used the wrong name. It's Andrew Cumio, not Anthony Cumio. Oh, yeah. That's uh, Opie and Anthony. Uh, he's a much better human being than, than Andrew. Yeah, but he banned the sale of Confederate and Nazi flags, which I uh, got no plans of flying those fucking things. But uh, as Americans, we should, if I want to put 30 of them out in my front yard, Nazi swastikas and fucking all the Confederate flags I want to, you should be allowed to. Um, I think people forgot that free speech is, uh, doesn't mean you can't look or hear and see shit that you don't fucking agree with and not be offended or quiet those people. Um, I don't know, man. I just remember back, you know, it was like the, from, from what I, what I think of liberals or what liberals initially were, were people that would defend that. Uh, would defend like Nazis being allowed to say their their horse shit out on the street, um, or the KKK saying their horse shit out in the street. Um, but now it's like flipped. Whereas it used to be the conservatives would be like try to shut them down. It's now the liberals that are shutting them down. Historically speaking. Yeah. Crazy times, huh? Yeah, I just don't, uh, I don't know where it stops at, and it's kind of, oh, man, these politicians, I think they just love having power over people and doing things, and I also saw there's uh, some um, some issues with uh, some sexual harassment claims towards uh, um, Andrew Cumio. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. These are fucking people, man. I don't know. I'm not an expert on this. But uh, you're right, though. Just even talking about this would get... Fortunately, like, only, like, six people listen to this. <laughs> so I think we're safe. But yeah. fuck them. Um, fuck the six listeners, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, that's... I think we... Line up almost exactly because like I said a lot of these things I don't even actually believe in, but it seems like if you talk like that, then you're just automatically put in camp instead of just like you said, free speech and try and preserve that. Yeah, exactly, man. I don't, uh, it's insane to think that there's a governor or banning the sale of those things. And the fact there's no checks or balances to stop him from doing that. And if you, if you think this is where he stops, I mean, they just love power. They just love being able to tell people what to do. That's why I'm, like, so anti... Uh, why sometimes I push back towards some of this corona shit, because I'm like, how much of this is them being honest or just... They love the feeling of having power over people or telling people what to do. Yeah. And a lot of, like, a lot of the cancel culture is that, and... A lot of the liberal politicians is just that. Just oh god, I just I told these other human beings what to do, and they had to do it. It's great. I love it. Uh, and that's what makes me fucking sick and pisses me off. Should we uh, move on to some game news before we lose one of our listeners? <laughs> Sounds good, man. You know, I can talk. So I don't care. Dissociate from them. Uh huh. Uh. -huh. So the first one I have here is from Games Radar, and it says Arc 2 is coming to Xbox Series X and Series S as a console launch exclusive. In a new Xbox Wire blog post, Xbox has revealed that the recently announced Arc 2 will be arriving in 2022 as this kind of redundant as an Xbox Series X exclusive. And uh, I feel like I start taking chunks of these stories out. I tried to, but I don't read all of them. That was just so redundant. The Ark franchise has a long history with the Xbox community. So the latest news isn't all that sur surprising. Ark Survival Evolved, Jesus, was originally a console exclusive in the Xbox game preview program back in December 2015. Before it eventually released in August 2017, just in time for the launch of the Xbox One. The one, Xbox One X. God, I can't keep track of all this shit. Ark Survival Evolved was one of the first Xbox One X enhanced titles before it joined 
Xbox Game Pass and has since gained multiple DLCs. It's also one of the first titles to be optimized for the next-gen Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S. ARC 2 was announced last week during the Game Awards 2020, along with a surprise cinematic trailer, which featured... It's about to get some crazy new news here, get ready. Which featured none other than Vin Diesel, who will be playing a hero character, hero character called Santiago da Costa, which I'm pretty sure... I feel like that's a Fast name. Yeah. Um, yeah. We also recently learned that the Fast and Furious and Guardians of the Galaxy star will be serving as executive producer of the game's sequel, having played more than 1,000 hours of our survival evolved. Since it's, <laughs> since it's labeled as a launch exclusive, it's possible that after its release window in 2022, the Arc 2 may also make its way to PC via Xbox Game Pass and Steam, much like its predecessor, but we'll have to wait and see. The festive season upon us. <laughs> I left this party on purpose, and I was going to try and just read it, <laughs> read it seriously, just as like it was part of the article. <laughs> the festive season is upon us, so here are the best gifts. <laughs> For gamers, we're hoping to find in our stockings. <laughs> I deleted and I was like, that's just too dumb. and just sounds like it's part of the, it looks like it's part of the article, but totally should not be. Um, but, yeah, I'm almost positive that's a name from Fast and Furious, which is one of the first. It's, uh, I looked it up. It's Dominic in Fast and Furious. Isn't his last, what's his last name? Toretto. Oh, I could have sworn that was a name Fast and Furious. Maybe it wasn't him or maybe I'm just making that up. Um, the first thing was I did totally thought this was a PC exclusive first, but this says the opposite. So it started on Xbox. Did you know that? Uh, no. Because I thought this was one of the games that when I got a PC, I was like, ooh, I gotta check that out. Let's look it up and see here. I definitely thought, uh, um, what's the arc? What's the subtitle? It is, I said like five times, I still remember. Survival Evolved. Because like the most generic name ever. Let's see. Why is it so hard to find? There it is, Wikipedia. Um... First released on PC as early access. That's right. I could have sworn that. And that's why I thought it was weird later when it says how it's going to launch as an exclusive. But it's possible it'll release um, in 2022 as a PC game via Xbox Game Pass or Steam, much like its predecessor. Which, again... Yeah, it was uh, released in August 2017 for PS4 and Xbox One. Yeah, because even when I saw this, I just assumed that even though it's a launch exclusive, which I do think is interesting and odd because I don't think we noticed that or maybe they didn't make it obvious during the Game Awards. I feel like I even said about other games, but I don't think I did with this one because I feel like I saw some games that only had a PlayStation logo, but I don't remember ever thinking that with Xbox. But uh, even with it being Xbox exclusive, I would have assumed that that meant still PC, just not PlayStation like a... That's the console exclusive. So I think it's interesting it's not coming to either. I also think it's interesting that Vin Diesel isn't just the main actor, but he's an executive producer, and he's put in more than 1,000 hours of the game, which I don't know is, is true or not, but the fact that he's that involved in the game, I feel like makes it a little more believable. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, that's... Uh, uh when we watched it, it kind of seemed like, oh, you wanted a, a big name in there and everybody's going to recognize that. But, yeah, the fact that he's that involved and apparently that much in love with the game, I feel like it's uh, more than just a get a name kind of thing. I, I love the premise of this game, though. Me too. I'm I just... going through some of the photos right now, some crazy shit that happens in there. Yeah, I'm super interested. Uh, like I said, when I got my PC, that was one of the first games I was excited to try, but 
And I know people like it. It's just once I saw what it was, I was like, this world seems so cool, but I don't know if I'd really be down with what the game actually is. So there's not like a story, and it's kind of just one of those games that keeps going. So the fact that this looks like it has a like a deep, meaningful campaign in the story makes me immediately interested in it. Do you remember the the books, and then I think it came a TV series, Dinotopia? Sounds familiar. I think if you saw a picture of it, you'd recognize it, but it uh, always seems like it was definitely took a lot from that. Um, looking up now. Yeah, it was just like a book series. Oh, and yeah. I know you're talking like about. A yeah. And TV show. Yeah, so I guess we'll see uh, later. Well, not next year, even. It said 2022. So we got a little bit to uh, all this happens. But I wonder how accurate all this info is in here since their information about the past wasn't completely accurate. <laughs> and then. The next one I had here was from Game Informer, and it's finally some potentially good news for Mass Effect. It says, A new Mass Effect game is in the works, as confirmed by a teaser trailer shown off during the recent Game Awards. We saw our Blueberry Liara, uh, which is a disgusting way to... She's a blue character in the universe, and they just call her Blueberry, like that's the thing they do. <laughs> Once more with a cryptic trailer that closed the bridge between two galaxies with the messaging that Mass Effect's quote will continue. The older older Liara had fans spinning with ideas about where the story will go next, but the recent news of Mark Dara and Casey Hudson's departure still weighed heavily on minds. It sounds like the way I read that sound like mine, Ryan. Uh, please keep in mind. For those worried about the teams coming together for the future of such an iconic franchise. Bioware's Michael Gamble did recently confirm a few returning faces uh, specifically for this project. Derek Watts. Watts is the original art director for the Mass Effect series. Brennan Holmes. Holmes has worked on the entire Mass Effect trilogy, Dragon Age Inquisition and Origins, Andromeda, and dating all the way back to Baldur's Gate 2. He's a lifelong Bioware staple and immediately familiar with all the uh, evolutions the studio has un undergone. And then there's two more. We have Paris Lay. Lay was a cinematic director for the Mass Effect trilogy and he is returning to, the Bio to Bioware as a series specifically to bring back his vision for the new game. Specifically to bring back his vision for the new game. Dusty Evermore, which sounds like a, a, the most wow name ever. Evermore was a key person when it came to bringing the vision of the original Normandy to life in the first Mass Effect game. He left Bioware back in 2015. Like Lay, but, oh, like Lay, but is returning to, to his, add his talents to the new Mass Effect game. Holmes and Watts never left the studio, though, though, though they did work on other franchises. But Evermore and Lay are both returning to the Bioware fold for more Mass Effect goodness. So the beginning of this, I feel like, is a little misleading because it makes it sound like four people are like, oh, yeah, I want to come back to Bioware to save Mass Effect. And the, other, the end of the article is like, yeah, two of them were still with Bioware. They just kind of stopped working Mass Effect. But I still feel like that's the first good news about Mass Effect since... Uh, the reveal of the remastered trilogy and have such excitement and then just seeing like the top talent leave out of nowhere well yes it even as exciting as that teaser trailer was as this article alluded to i had that same exact thought it was like it's exciting but we just got news of, like two of the biggest people leaving and they were supposed to be the future of the franchise and bringing this together so this gives me hope like i said a little bit weird that Two of the people who are still with the studio and just weren't already working on Mass Effect if they're that important and integral to the story and direction of the game. I don't know why they would be working on other franchises. But still, that is uh, what seems to be a lot of talent and high-end people. So that gives me more hope for something that I was becoming worried about. Um, and then the only other thing in here, and it's... Uh, 
James actually mentioned this to me as well at work today, and I didn't put it together when I watched it, but like the article says, uh, Liara was um, one of the main characters from Mass Effect, and I guess she was the one in the teaser trailer that picked that up, picked up the uh, relay that she was holding. Mm -hmm. So it's hard. It's obviously a sequel, which we already knew, and but it is hard to tell where that would be still because this species can live to be a thousand years. So it's hard to tell how much of humanity or what is left at that point. I'm not spoiling things. I'm just saying in general, a thousand years of time could change a lot of history or species could come and go. But it uh, does show that it's obviously connected very closely to the original trilogy, which was made clear with that pickup, but I think it became a lot more clear that they even have one of the main characters there. I still don't like the use of them calling her Blueberry, and I feel like uh, with how people are with dumb terms, I can't believe that didn't create some stir about being racist or something, even though it's just fucking stupid. It's not offensive. Yeah, I don't like Blueberry either. <laughs> it's just weird. James, I know you're a Mass Effect guy. Write in. Tell us how you feel, feel about we are being a Blueberry. I feel like this is kind of maybe... Bioware should feed into that and make a um, Mass Effect Blueberry, and it's a side story about her. So, I only have one more. It's from PC Gamer. I don't know if you saw this, Cody. I think you'll be excited. And it's that uh, Space Jam is getting a game. The Space Jam, uh, based off the new Space Jam movie, says the Space Jam game will be available as a perk for Xbox Game, game Pass Ultimate members in 2021 perks are special bonuses for subscribers to the service so don't expect to expect this to be part of the regular game pass lineup the devs are currently soliciting ideas for the game from the fans as part of a contest helping promote microsoft's virtual workshops on coding and game development it seems that we shouldn't expect the space jam game to be a massive release based on the fact that it'll be going from concept concept to launch in a matter of months but if there's any studio that knows fun fun retro games it's digital eclipse the company has been responsible for some truly excellent retro compilations in recent years including the first Mega Man legacy collection and the snk 40th anniversary collection and then this is what caught my attention not to take anything away from the rest of the folks working at the studio but you deserve to know that blinking white guy is working on the Space Jam game. Memes made Dave Scanlon immortal, but game fans might also remember him from his time at video game site Giant Bomb. He now works at Digital Eclipse as a producer, along with the rest of the studio, is bringing Space Jam to digital life, which uh, blinking white guy is a meme, and uh, as they say in here, it's a... Uh, <laughs> Drew Scanlon from Giant Bomb. I remember when I told you that, Cody, you're, oh, shit, really? Because I'm not being a hipster. I just, you know, I love Giant Bomb forever. So when that became a meme, that was so weird to me. That would be like somebody, not that we're on the scale, I'm just saying, to give an example, somebody watching this show and one of us turning into a meme, and they'd be like, oh, no, that's on this podcast I watch. It'd be so weird that it became like a such mainstream thing that 99% of the people are sharing it don't know who he is, which I guess I'm not being a hipster. It's just weird that he was on something that is actually well known and has a big audience and then became so much bigger off of one gift that nobody even knows who he is. Yeah. Um, I also, I'm not going to lie. I didn't, I know he stopped doing, uh, his YouTube channel that you said you really liked. Um, just one second. Are you there? Oh, there we go. Your audio cut out. I want to make sure before we get going. I'll try and pay attention to see if it does it again. Um, but uh, it was Cloth Map, if you remember. You said you really liked. Um, or Map. Cloth Map, I think it's right. His YouTube channel. But uh, I knew he stopped doing that, but I didn't know he went into game development. Just one second. Cut out again. I don't know what's happening. Maybe the batteries are dying.
Um, the controller that I'm using to hear your audio is cutting out, so every time it does, your audio won't come through. What happened? The controller I'm using to listen to your audio is turning off, so every time. Um, yeah, it's a cloth map. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah, yeah so I didn't know he got any game development, and like it says, I'm sure this isn't going to be some major release or anything, but I don't think it needs to be, and I don't think it needs years of preparation and development. Like I said, I think there's not enough of these kind of just silly arcade games for uh, sports that don't take them too seriously. I love simulation sports games, but there needs to be a balance like most things in games, and there's not enough of these over-the-top games anymore. And I feel like Space Jam is a perfect property to do some crazy shit with. Yeah, like a space Space Jam or something, or a, a NBA Jam. Yeah, so. NBA Space Jam. There we go. Oh. Um, that won't happen sadly because we know it's gonna be a much smaller project. And I got extra excited when it said Game Pass Ultimate perk. I was like, all right, that's even more reason. But then they clarified that that's like one of those things we get where you can games go on sale or whatever, but not necessarily part of the Game Pass. But that's all I had for. News. Do you want to go into media pickups? I don't have any. I don't have any either. You don't? Oh, wow. Look at this. this might be... oh. All right. Um, I'm going to pay attention to your audio. So if I say anything, if you want to stop talking so you don't have to repeat everything you can, and I'll tell you when it gets back on. But it seems to be working now. Okay. Um, what have you been playing? Um, Jesus, man. A little bit of everything. We played Predator last night with you. Uh, mm-hmm. it feels like I'm like running through mud or something. It's very, very clunky. I don't know how to describe. It's one of the more clunky uh, FPSs I've played, and I'm usually okay with that. Like if someone's like, "Oh, the game's clunky," I don't really pick up on it as much, or then that's a sensitive. But this game is incredibly clunky. Um, I'm not sure if they wanted it to be so that way you couldn't just aim at the predator and just fuck him up. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if it's because it's missing an aim assist. I did notice a slight aim assist, but I don't know how to describe it. I feel like this would be a much better game on PC. Um, it's okay. I think the the second game mode, which is where it's two human groups fighting each other, was much better than the actual game mode. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think I'll play this alone, and only when someone wants to play it. Not, I don't think I'll be wanting to play it. What do you think of it? Um, I definitely don't think it's a perfect game, and I think there's definitely criticisms. Uh, but at the same time, I told you last night, I was having so much fun with it, which I feel like, not you in particular, I do it too, we all do it, especially when you're just into games and talk about them and everything. I feel like sometimes we lose sight in just the fun of games and break down things too much. I feel like there are valid re- reasons. Like I said, I'm not saying what you said is not valid because even with me liking it, I do think there is issue- there's issues. The uh, grenades are happen entirely too often. You'll be in a fight and there'll be six grenade notifications around you, and that's a, a pretty often thing. Not like, oh, shit, I got ambushed, which would be actually kind of cool if that happened sporadically but it happened entirely too often um there's even the base gameplay and everything about it for the most part it's hard to really praise too much so i don't think the things you aren't saying aren't valid i just think for me i try to come down more on if i'm enjoying something i just had so much fun with you guys last night i think that was definitely a big part of it was just being with you guys and having fun i think if it was just me i would definitely see a difference so i'm with you that friends kind of make it especially because it already is co-op centric to begin with um the game itself i think it is actually very graphically impressive i don't know how you feel but i thought it looked really pretty um but besides that it does seem like it's kind of a a product of the past almost like um the shooting, this is going to be a kind of, um, 
an obscure reference. I don't even know if you'll know it. But the shooting and the mechanics and what you're describing is like muddy and clunkiness reminds me of the PS3 exclusive uh, multiplayer only Punisher shooter. I don't know if you ever even knew that was a thing. No. But that was another one that wasn't a big hit, but for some reason I just, again, really enjoyed it. And that one I didn't have anybody else play with. It was just a lot of fun. Even, And that was, uh, I don't know if I said the year. It was 2009. So that tells you how dated this is. Like I said, I think it definitely, I'm not trying to diss the game. I think graphically it's 100 times better than that. And I think it's impressive even from modern day, day graphics. But yeah, it does seem... Like a lot of the gameplay and aspects are very dated, but for some reason not bother me because I'm having so much fun with it. But uh, then there's obviously things that the gameplay that you can't compare to that, like the Predator side of it, which kind of feels like a mixture of like Evolve, which I know probably isn't the best compliment, and Jason and Friday the Thirteenth. So I feel like it obviously does have its own interesting twist and things to go with it but yeah kind of long-winded but i enjoy it but i think there's definitely more than valid criticisms i think the uh when i initially played the beta and what i heard from the game launch initially it doesn't seem like it's like downright broken or anything it kind of just more so seems a little dated and needs seems like it needs some updates not like this game's unplayable or shouldn't have been released not that kind of broken at least to me Monkey shooters, man. Uh, like even on our streams, I was playing Black and still having fun with it. And even this almost feels like a step backwards, even to like the Alien vs. Predator uh, reboot from like 2010. Mm-hmm. I had to look this up. It's uh, made by Rebellion. I forgot oh, that yeah. they made that, but I felt like that was way more fluid. And I don't know if you played it or not, but being the Predator, being the Alien, I that was a. Uh... A game I tried the demo or beta or whatever came out because I love that property, especially. I know people hate on those together, like the Alien vs. Predator, but I thought that was even more interesting. But I don't know what was out at the time or something. or some reason I didn't keep up with it or actually get the full game. It's uh, pretty bad. Yeah, that's what um, I've heard. But I know AV, uh, AVP, we had a lot of fun with it. I never owned it, but just one of my friends did. Mm-hmm. And we'd play it at his house. Um, it was legit. Oh, no. Cody, cut out just a second. I'm going to run up and get batteries. This is the most professional podcast yet. <laughs> now I'll cut this out. No. <laughs> Hello, Casey. Cody? Yes. All right. Hello. We're back. I actually got brand, I got brand new batteries because I thought I was just glitching out, but then I realized I just kept doing it. The batteries must be dying, so it'll be good now. But um, that's going to be extra awkward if you're listening to the podcast. <laughs> but I can maybe edit that a little bit. Um, you were talking about, I think, Colonial Marines last or AVP? Yeah, AVP, uh, okay. I think, uh, I remember, was it Predator 2? 
when they go on the ship and they see an alien skull and uh from what i i don't know what i know historically if it was accurate or not it was supposedly just some leftover props from one of the alien movies and they oh, just right. threw in the predator thing and then people picked up on it and they weren't supposed to <laughs> it kind of accidentally happened uh-huh. and i think video games was actually the first time uh avp was together alien and predator huh might have been a comic as well, but I think it was video games in the late nineties. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I tried messing with the sensitivity too to see if I could fix it, and it, it's just real sticky. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's just clunky as fuck, and it's it's almost as clunky as like a late nineties shooter. I don't know how to describe it. Uh, like an early Xbox title. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm just not even, like I said, I'm not trying to be smug or anything. You just, games are fun. You don't understand it because I think there's valid criticisms. But maybe I've, even then I'm being too light on it because I can see those issues. I just, I like modern shooters, but you know, I've had, I have issues with some modern shooters and how they all try and have so much in them now and, so many perks and add-ons and this game's has too so i'm not completely pushing that aside but i feel like the base gameplay kind of just seems like a generic shooter which sounds like an insult but it's kind of a nice change of pace for me even though it might seem a little dated but i mean it's kind of why i like it. it just seems old school but i don't think it's intentional so I, even that's i don't think it's a huge compliment because i'm sure they would rather it feel like call of duty or halo if they could yeah, and the customization is pretty nice. I thought you'd have to use yeah. real money, but it seems like it's pretty lock this shit or get loot boxes. Um, for ten bucks, I'm not complaining. Yeah, definitely. That was the the other thing we said. I don't think even forty bucks. I think they already did discounted, so I think that was crazy. Besides, when the game first launched, because it seemed like it was unplayable. But yeah, at ten bucks. They said when we, everybody went to the movies. When that was a regular thing, you would go buy a ticket for $10, and I don't know, it was kind of bad, but I'll check it out for two hours, and we probably spent more than two hours just yesterday, our first time playing it. So, <laughs> And I, we've all done that. I've done that too. So, again, I'm not trying to uh, stand on my soapbox here or anything, but I feel like it's hard to think about things in the uh, context of everything sometimes. Um. Damn it, I was going to say something else about the game, too. I can't remember. Oh, no. Uh, I forget. But, yeah. There's some paid DLC for it, too. You get some cool skins. Um, Marshawn Lynch. Yeah. Uh, like, each month they add something new. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know, man. I, besides playing with you guys, I don't think I'll really play it that much more. Yeah, I gotcha. What else have you been playing? You say you've been playing a good amount of different stuff? Um, some Minecraft dungeons. I uh, I installed the original Prey. I'm getting ready to sit down with that. Not okay. the newest one, but the yeah. one prior. I never played that. Uh, without turning on my Xbox, somehow my section of the notes with what I've been playing got, got erased. Oh, no. Yeah, so there's a little bit of everything mixed in there. Uh-huh. The normal stuff, and I'm missing a couple titles, but just working on the backlog, I guess. Yeah, I gotcha. I set up, set up in my notes, uh, though, how to, um, a more organized way of getting through my backlog, but that's about it. What about you? Oh, very nice. Do you want to talk about that, or would it not be interesting? You want to talk about another episode? I just, like, put a, like, a focus list of shit I want to play. Okay. Um, and it's a little bit more contained, like, it's, like, only... <laughs> Only like uh, 10, 10 video games at a time, and then once those I've tried or beaten those, I move on to the next ones. I gotcha. Yeah, it's not a bad idea, especially for somebody like you that you say kind of gets distracted or doesn't have much of a attention span to stick with things. Yeah, if something's not pulling me in, man, I'm out. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of something like that, like Sonic. The car racer, like, there's no way I could beat all their tracks and fuck around with that. That yeah. story is already ridiculous. Oh, I remember what I was going to say about Predator. Just the mission we talked about a bunch last night is so fucking cliche. 
All right, Bravo team, go in and clear out the drug camp of all the chemicals. <laughs> and all the objectives are just like, go upload the documents <laughs> to, to the computer. And then you're just kind of sitting around, just like defending an area while it's downloading. And all right, team, blow up <laughs> the generators. And then you just shoot the generators. Um, I just, I just think they're too much of an indie team to to take on what they what they've the last yeah. couple games. So that's why I'm a way more forgiving than this. If this was like fucking EA <laughs> or somebody that's supposed to be able to make really nice, polished, big games. Mm-hmm. I'd be really, really pissed off. Not <laughs> pissed off. It's like, what the fuck happened? Yeah. But because I know the team and understand it, I, I, uh, I'm way more forgiving and and uh, stick with their shit longer than I would if it was a bigger team. No, I hear you. Um, I actually haven't played much this week. I uh, only played Predator with you guys, and then before I got on there, I was uh, trying to make my way through more Last of Us Part Two. But even that, I didn't play too long because then we got him Predator. So that's actually all I played this week. So kind of slack in that department. And it sucks because I want to play more games. It's not – sometimes it's nice. Like I said, if you're doing other things or I never make it like a mission, I have to play games. I just enjoy playing games. So a lot of times if I don't, it sucks because I wanted to or I wish I would have played more. But it's not like an issue if I don't play games. Um, But uh, what have you been watching? Uh, let's see. Let me go to my show notes here. I watched uh, Star Wars Episode One, Episode Two, and the 2003 Clone Wars. Okay. Um, man, that shit, Clone Wars 2003, is the first time I've gone through them since, I don't know, it's been a minute. Uh, especially this far into the series. I think it's definitely the best of the Clone Wars since it's not, never talked about. Mm-hmm. I work with a guy that's uh, super into Star Wars and has watched the series through multiple times and all the Clone Wars and the Rebels and shit like that. And he had never even heard of this. I just feel like it. I feel like George Lucas buried it and then Disney just kept burying it. It's not even on Disney Plus. You have to get on. Fortunately, there's a guy on YouTube that has them all on there. Um, But Jesus, man. Like watching episode two. Like, I think you have to watch episode two and then go straight into it because it picks up right where left episode two leaves off. Okay. Uh, and there's some big things in there, man, that the first time they introduce shit. Like, uh, the first time you ever see Anakin or Palpatine kind of, you know, tr- have more trust in Anakin or try to persuade the Jedi Masters to kind of give him more responsibility. And you could kind of see him, like, driving the wedge in between between the two or... Uh, it's made by the the guy that created uh, Samurai Jack. Uh, I don't know if that's why it's not on Disney Plus. If he has, I don't know if he has like some say in it. Uh, I'm not sure, but it is. In my coworker had never heard of it, but he's also a big Samurai Jack creator. Uh, so I was like, bro, you gotta you definitely gotta watch it. Gindy Tartofsky. I can never remember his fucking name, but uh, he's made a lot of a lot of cool stuff. Um, man, I, I don't know. It's just the animation behind it's really good. But I think too, like I need to look up. But I think this is the first time they ever showed the the planet Ilum, which uh, you play Fallen Order. That's on there. Okay. And eventually, I think there's a lot of fan, fan theories. Eventually, become Star Killer Base, which is kind of like the um uh the new death star and the newest ones um what else general it's the first time general grievous is introduced which is i mean he's a huge part of episode three so um he's just badass in that show uh just a lot of shit that just gets you almost feel like going from episode two to episode three, there's a huge jump. And that's because I think of this TV show, this TV show fills in a lot to go back to what James was asking his question about. Um, I think this is a huge filler and for like people not to really know about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just, it's done so well, man. I fucking love that series and I'm happy to have it on DVD because Disney just wants to pretend like it doesn't exist. 
they even have all the Lego Star Wars shit up. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think the two Star Wars things that are really missing from Disney Plus is 2003 Clone Wars and um, the Christmas special that everyone always makes fun of. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't know what the fuck you're doing, Disney, but it'd be cool if you guys got that. But uh, besides that, that's all I've been watching, man, just Star Wars shit. Is there a reason uh, you went all Star Wars? Uh, yeah, I want to go back and rewatch uh, all three Clone War things. Okay. Uh, so, and I felt like might as well just start episode one and go to episode two, Clone Wars 2003, Clone Wars movie, and then the Clone Wars TV show. Um, and then, because uh, a lot of the shit that's happening in these is also happening in the Mandalorian, so mm-hmm. I sense like the three or four biggest things have been spoiled by shitty Facebook ads. <laughs> so like I said, it's not even people posting. It's like these these dumb fucking websites that uh-huh. yeah. I'm guessing is just a couple of idiots just put together. It's like something like comicgenius.com and it's just like fucking the title of the article is just huge spoilers and pictures. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I said, fuck it. I'm not even watching Mandalorian then. So I might as well just go back and get all the filler stuff and then watch it all the way through. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, what I'm doing. So you're going to watch The Mandalorian once it, the season finishes, you mean? Uh, yeah, once I get through all of uh, uh, the Clone Wars series. Okay. Um, so I've got uh, a movie in the whole Clone Wars series. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Um, I watched a decent amount this week. I didn't watch any Lost, we're taking a few weeks off and then starting back up in the new year, so no Lost this week. I did watch the crew win the MLS Cup. That was fantastic. 3 nothing against Seattle. First time they've won since 2008, but it was uh, fantastic. I thought they had a good chance to win, but not by that much. And if you watch the game... It shouldn't have been that close, which 3 nothing soccer isn't close to begin with. But Seattle's lucky it wasn't more of a blowout. Um, and then I watched the latest episode of The Mandalorian, which I I won't be these websites for you, don't worry. Um, <laughs> and then I talked last week about the holiday movies that made us and watching The Elf. I knew Danielle would love it, so I watched that again with her and then... Okay, so I didn't even know they made the movies that made us. I knew about the toys that made us, but I never knew about the movie one to begin with. So after I watched out with her, I went and watched all of the movie that made us. And um, some were better than others, but I think they're all worth watching. But that's all I've watched this week. Should we get on to the uh, free games? Sure. So on Xbox, you have on 360... Saints Row got out of hell till December 30th. And on Xbox One, you had the Raven remastered till December 30th. And, oh, whoops, I split this up weird. I meant to edit this. So on 360, you also have Stacking till December 31st. And on Xbox One, you have Bleed 2 till January 15th. On PlayStation Plus, you have Worms Rumble, Just Cause 4, and Rocket Arena for PS4. And on PS5, you have Bug Snacks. Do you have any fake outrage? No, I don't have anything. What about you? Yeah. Um, did you hear about that shooting in New York yesterday? Yeah. So, in case you didn't, it was... Uh, there were ha- Huh? I'd say it's more a suicide by cop. Um, yeah, well, I- I'll get into it. Don't worry. Um, it was, they were having a, what would you call it? Uh, it's not a concert. What would you call it? Like a parade. I feel like there's a name for it though. It was outside of a church, so like not a choir. I can't remember what they call it, but there's some kind of music event outside of a church in New York city. And after it ended, this guy pulled out two pistols and, started shooting him in the air and the cops saw him and started freaking out and he kept saying kill me so yeah like you said it was kind of like I'd say kind of forced suicide because you know he wasn't shooting people I don't feel like he can really just 
trust somebody that's shooting guns in the air to not do anything. I feel like you got to do something, but um, I don't feel like that's the important part of the story. I don't know if you watched the video. What really concerned me was after they shot him multiple times, there was probably 20 cops, and they all ran up to try and like cover him, make sure he wasn't still alive and holding a gun or anything. But, like I said, it was like 20 cops, and there was not even close to six feet between each of these cops. There was probably, <laughs> you can laugh all you want, but these are serious times. <laughs> yeah, somebody's... Like, how is he gonna do? How is he gonna turn this around? <laughs> how is he gonna turn this one around? Yeah, it felt weird to even do because I was saying everything else that happened was far more serious. But uh, it also, I was thinking that as I was watching it, and then it kind of, as dark as it was, became humorous because I was already thinking that. And then a cop car pulled up, and the back of its lights, it had like a like buses do the scrolling text to light up. It literally said, "Stay six feet apart to uh, save your life." I was there <laughs> no fucking way. It was like a sitcom. Yeah, I don't I don't know if it was him shooting or what, but he kept coming in and out of cover. And I thought maybe a cop was shooting at him. But did you see the footage where there was an old man with like a like a cane or something like stuck behind yeah. some shit because he couldn't move fast uh -huh. enough? And the cop was like clearly trying to get them to go <laughs> with the old man. I'm pretty sure he was a cane. And I, uh -huh. It almost looked like the cop almost like pushed him. I get what the cop was doing, yeah. but it was still felt ridiculous um also i wanted to play back see if it was the cop shooting at him that many times or if he was shooting i couldn't really tell it was a weird suicide by cop uh there was an even crazier one i saw happen like on the fourth this month that was definitely a suicide by cop where the cops were like uh definitely begging him not to pull the gun because that's what he, he wanted to pull the gun just so they would shoot him yeah but it was way crazier than that one, so I don't quite understand why that one blew up so much. Um, I mean, maybe it's just because he's out in the open and shooting near people. And yeah, that's what I've been saying. I don't know where the other one was, but New York City, I'm sure, factored in that too. Oh yeah, I think anyone just likes the the phrasing of shooting. Um. Yeah, man. I don't. I don't know why you would do that. Listen, if you want to kill yourself, don't fucking make a cop do it. Because the uh, the body came on the guys that shot the other guy. He's pretty fucking close. Like one of those like close things where you're like, yeah, he definitely got blood on him or something like that. But at the end, the cops like, God damn it! Like, cause you know, it's like you just fucked him over for the rest of his life. Yeah. Just because that gun that you're pointing at other people, you couldn't, you didn't have the fucking balls to put it to your head and shoot it. Now this cop's got to go home and think like, fucking, I just killed somebody. Yeah. If I would have done this, he would have lived. If I would have done that, like, no, it's great. Now he lives with that for the rest of his life because you couldn't go paint the walls by yourself somewhere or something. Gotcha. I mean, Jesus, don't commit suicide, but Jesus Christ, don't make somebody else do it to, to you. Nobody wants to do that. Even the one I watched where the cop's, like, begging the kid, like, dude, you don't have to do this, man. Like, listen to me, listen. And then the cop you can hear is just like, God damn it. Like, he's just pissed. Yeah. It's like, great, now you ruined his fucking life. Nice. <laughs> nice because you couldn't fucking do it yourself but um yeah it's a it's a weird video if we send it to you and then they like he t-boned a lady and that's why the cops caught up with him <laughs> and the one cop's like he know the one cop knows what's coming and he's like telling the lady that t-boned him because they can't get her out of her car like okay ma'am just go ahead and sit down okay just lay down okay we'll get you out after this and then you just, of course, they just fucking unload on him like 30 cops just filling him, filling him up. And then you hear the driver of the lady, she is like full, and it's understandable be doing the same thing. She's just screaming, like the top of her lungs, just screaming. And it's like, dude, just because you fucking couldn't put that gun that you just pointed at cops at your fucking head, I feel like it's more ballsy to have someone shoot at you than. There's a chance you could live. There's a chance you could be a fucked up vegetable or some shit after that. And so just doing it yourself. So this suicide by cops never makes sense to me. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that was a good one, buddy. <laughs> Thank you.
<laughs> After you got all serious afterwards, I felt even worse because I was like, this already, obviously the real situation so messed up. And then... <laughs> So, the world the world's a crazy place man and thankfully the internet you can go out and you can experience how how unsafe the world is i guess you could say the world's a mess um, <laughs> it really is though yeah i think it's ironic because it's supposed to be fake outrage and it's to mock all that but i feel like i just uh i wasn't outraged at all but i definitely just uh contribute what you talk about the world being a crazy place i saw saw a guy get killed and i'm like oh shit this is time for some fake outrage those people are way too close <laughs> yeah man they can Prime really content up. right there I feel like I a shitty like news a, reporter uh, there's a youtube channel that uploads all the police cams of shootings and shit uh my fear is them just yelling at dead bodies like, dude, you guys just put like forty rounds in this guy, and there's just blood everywhere. He's not moving, but they're still screaming <laughs> at the dead. They're screaming at a dead body. Like, Don't move! Don't let me see your hands! Let me see your hands! Hands! It's like, dude, that bro, his face is gone. Like, the fuck? I don't think he's going anywhere. <clears throat> um, but yeah, if uh, you're gonna kill yourself, don't don't do it with cops. Well, speaking of killing yourself, we'll uh, wind out of here and um, cover a couple things on our way out, if you know what I'm saying. Um, the first one is we talked last week about um, doing our own awards show. So we're going to do it on as long as everything goes as planned. When we record our normal episode on De or December 30th, which is Wednesday, so as long as it comes out in time, it'll be Thursday, New Year's Eve. And that'll be our show where we reveal our nominees. We'll give all the details once that episode comes. And then the next episode after that, which again, if everything goes planned, will be in 2021, which is fucking bonkers, on January 6th when we record the episode and then release on the 7th the next day. But I, uh, I got an idea for the first award. Okay. The best suicide by cop. Okay. Um. I would say probably Georgie at the end of Coffee Talk if we ever finish it. Oh God, that would be that'd be worth sticking around for the ending. <laughs> but I've already been thinking of some categories. Cody has as well. Like I said, if you guys have any suggestions, let me know. If you guys have any suggestions for the award show name, because I want to try and make it a yearly thing, let me know. I got a couple ideas in my head, but they're pretty generic, which would also kind of be funny, I guess. So if you guys have any ideas, let me know, and then. I'm also going to do one more Extra Life charity stream this year. I'm going to do it on December 23rd, which is Wednesday, our normal recording date. So we're going to try and record the episode the day before on the 22nd. So you should get the, that episode early or the next episode early. I guess it'll be, man, it's coming up fast. But uh, I'm going to do a, an all-day stream. We're going to figure out times, details, games. I'm playing all that jazz, but it'll be... Wednesday, December 23rd. And then, should we get on out of here, buddy? Let's do it. We're uh, going to Indianapolis tomorrow for an adventure. So I guess next week we could talk about how that went. Or if uh, things don't go as planned, maybe we won't get to talk at all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, we could suicide by cop. <laughs> that could be our next shirt. See how long we could wear that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. So... If you want to follow us, you can do that on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Current Backlog. And if you want to send any corrections, questions, or feedback, you can send to currentbacklogs at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Show me your hands. Dead body.